All right, so this is a real session, ladies and gentlemen, and I will be the havener in this case, though we're both practitioners. And uh, my name is Ulf Sandstrom, and this is Havening Techniques, a technique that I use uh, in almost everything I do. I, I love it. And this is Georgia Barnwell, isn't it? Yep. Hi, how are you? <laughs> and so uh, if you're seeing this, it's because we have agreed beforehand, if everything is fine and there's nothing too sensitive, we're going to share it as a way of learning from each other. So this way we can discuss what we see and we can agree and disagree and whatever and, and see if we find new ways. So I'm going to do this exactly the way I do it with everybody. So, all right. So you're getting the royal treatment because it's the only one I have. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so put your hands together. <laughs> put your hands together. There you go. Uh, you see, I, you and I know what this is, but I'll, I'll still explain it the exact way I do, right? So yeah. imagine that you have a glass pearl between your hands. <laughs> you do that? Mm -hmm. And now you're not supposed to crush it. You're not supposed to drop it. So that's the kind of friction you want. So it's a rolling motion. And keep that pearl there, right? Just imagine it. And if you are comfortable with it, you can do like me. You know, you're already doing it. A little wagging from side to side. Now this comes, it, it comes from many different places. It comes from Jewish uh, praying tradition, shuckling it's called. It comes from Buddhist praying, comes from Islamic praying, you know, in a Muslim tradition. And so it's because it's calming and it's because it's something that we don't do when we are frozen. It's also pelvic for exercise from yoga and loads of other stuff. But the main muscle system in the body <clears throat> is weighing. And since we're doing this on Zoom, it means that I can tell if something pops up in your system because then you will stop. Now, the deal with this, and you know this already, you know, I just wanted to sense, are your hands warm or cold? Ah, oh, they're medium. Okay, medium. And are they dry or humid? Up. <laughs> warming up, dry or humid then? And they are moistening up. They were cold Moistening and up. dry this morning. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. And see, the thing is this, it's irrelevant to the session if they are warm, cold, dry, or humid, but it is relevant that you activate the sensors in your hand, your sensomotoric system, because now you've activated the whole pathway from left and right brain halves to left and right hands and information that goes between them. And that's where your emotions will be expressing too. But the funny thing is, you know, Neurobiology 101, as long as your hands are moving, you cannot have a panic attack. It's impossible. Because panic takes over the whole brain, and in panic, you're frozen or you're just running around, but you're definitely not doing this. So if you can keep this going, it, it will be impossible for you to have a panic attack. And for me as well, and that's nice, you know? Yeah. Okay. So this comes from a discussion thread that we had, a dialogue in the Havening community, where I posted the signs of an excuse uh, because there are, there's, I mean, there's science to anything that you study. And science is a hypothesis. It doesn't have to be true for everybody. Peanuts are good for 900 people and 100 might die from a shock if they're allergic or one, who knows? Yeah. But we use science in Havening as a hypothesis to find out what we can do about something. And I use the science of a lot of things, among them clean communication and clean approach. And you know my answer to every question, right? It depends. <laughs> exactly. So that means, you know, will this be, will this be a 100% clean session? I have no idea. If appropriate. So tell me, what do you enjoy doing? Oh, I enjoy gardening, growing gardening. fruits. Okay. So is it okay for you to close your eyes? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Notice that you speeded up your hand slightly there because you were a little bit excited about gardening. That's yeah. calibration. <laughs> and so close your eyes and just describe to me a gardening scene where you feel joyful. Ah, well, in this time of year, when the snow is still on the ground, I like gardening indoors huh. and I like growing sprouts every day. So what kind of I... growing is that growing? Ah, oh, it's, it's, uh, wow. It's, it's waiting for the miracle. Every time, every time I soak the seeds, I'm always amazed that they sprout year after year, every time it's amazing. Look at that. There's new life. 
Yeah. Look at that. That is new life. So what does that make you feel like? Oh, it makes me feel hopeful and encouraged and um, nourished because the energy of them is so just so encouraging. I just feel the energy kind of wrap around me. But when you feel the energy wrapping around you, where in your body do you feel the energy wrapping around you? Just around the back and shoulders. Around the back and shoulders? Yeah. Hopeful and encouraged and, and, and nourished? A little bit of bubbling here. A bubbling? Yeah. Yeah, what kind of bubbling is the bubbling? It's excited. Exciting? Right. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So I want you to, you know, imagine the bubbling and the exciting and the smile that goes with that. The smile that you have naturally when you're hopeful and encouraged and nourished and wrapped around and warm and so energetic and just, just encouraging. Right? You got that? Got it. Ex excellent. And now, feel free to tell me what it is you'd like to resolve. Is it a situation, an emotion, or a behavior? And you do not need to share it unless you wish to. We can work content free. Okay, it's a long standing situation. Okay, long standing? Yeah, I would like what to get closure. What kind of standing is that long? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. It's, uh, <laughs> it's about a 20 year long um, pattern of behavior waiting for me, shaking me up so I would finally wake up. Okay, so it's a pattern of behavior shaking you so you finally will wake up. Yeah. And when you wake up, what do you think will be different? <laughs> I won't be stuck with that um, energy anymore. You won't be stuck with that energy anymore? Yeah. What will yeah. be possible in your life once you are not stuck with that energy anymore? Who knows? Anything. And what kind of is that? It's new, new, it's new. And there's newness and curiosity, but newness um, and curiosity. Okay. So yeah. 20 years, does that coincide with some kind of relationship? Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> <a wild> guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <It's nice>. <laughs> <laughs> right. And when you think about that, can you find the stuckness right now? Well, it sort of goes between here and here. Yeah. Um, oh, that's interesting. It makes it hard to breathe. It goes between here and here and makes it hard to breathe. Mm -hmm. And what uh, is that like when something goes between here and here? It's compressed. It's compressed? It's, yeah, holding me from moving. I can't. Okay. Yeah, it makes me want to struggle. Yeah, it makes you want to struggle. And so, you know, I, I, I believe in spirituality. I believe there are, you know, higher and lesser powers of different kinds and, and whatever that is. But I, I use maybe logic. So, you know, one day I'll believe in it to 80%, another day 44 and, and it's kind of a daily evaluation like the stock market. But I also believe in evolution and I believe that there is absolutely no change of any kind, no emotion, no reaction <laughs> that isn't triggered by something. And that doesn't want something to have happen. So what do you think stuck goes between here and here would like to have happen with your struggle? Well, it wants me to say no. Say no? Can yeah. you try saying no? Just say no right now? No. No. Okay. Hey, and can you try saying, you know, you know Buddha's mom? Her name is Tara. Can you imagine how she smiled when people started, you know, worshiping her son? And he said, no, no, don't worship me. Kill the Buddha. <laughs> mm -hmm. so yes. yeah so, what kind of what kind of no is it you'd like to be able to say because that was a quite a f assertive no it was a quite assertive no and and uh, it should have it should have appeared 20 years ago ah instead it appeared 10 years ago and um it has taken me this long to um put the wheels in motion to yeah. move, move along. So I have a good friend, a massage therapist who also is a holistic kinesiologist with muscle testing. 
It's really a fascinating. We work together with clients uh, because, you know, she works with the body and the mind, and I work with the mind and the body. And so we're kind of somewhere, you know, people resolve issues that have been going on for many, 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 many years, you know. 20 would seem like 15 minutes. So <laughs> she says always that when she talks to women, girls in general, of course, boys as well, but what every woman, girl should know is that no is a complete sentence. Absolutely. You agree? Yeah, and you absolutely. don't have to shout it from a rooftop. You, you, you should be able to say just, no. Yeah, no. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So close your eyes. Mm -hmm. Have you seen Doctor Who? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> enter the TARDIS and go back in time, 20 years, and go into that situation, and you are revisiting yourself. You don't know it's you, but you take over, and you go in, and you deliver the no. And do that in your head right now with your eyes closed. And let me know what happens. Ooh. Feels like there's an explosion and all the pieces of everything just went. And when there is an explosion, all the pieces just went. Do you need some clearing of that space? Do you need like some wind to blow away the debris or is it, are you good? Some wind would be good. What kind of wind? Oh, just a gentle, just a gentle wind. Mm -hmm. And if I said amazing, there is new life, how, how does that feel? Oh yeah, absolutely. It make and and there's new life. It makes me very curious. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. And I think that's a, I think that's done completely wrong when people bring up kids and tell them curiosity killed the cat because curiosity is the only thing that keeps people alive. When you lose it, you can might as well kill yourself. Unless you're very curious about the other side and you know, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. So Imagine going into the future now. And you go into a situation where you wish that you would behave in a certain way right now. You can have your eyes closed, it's fine. And you go to that situation that you're hoping for in the future where this has worked exactly the way you wish for and more beyond your curiosity. Exactly. So don't underspend now. You're going into a future where you're no guides you with a smile and where you actually in this future you're kind of thankful for everything that happened during those 20 years you know because there were good things as well that came out of it and stuff but now you have the no under your belt you have a black belt in no and it's you know it's good there you go so what do you see that is different in that future ah uh, more connection more connection more Creativity. Creativity. Acceptance and compassion. Okay. So connection, creativity, acceptance, and compassion. And if you embody that, you, you know, like if you pour warm milk like the French do in black bitter coffee, they call it café au lait, right? You like that? Yeah. Love it. So, and once you do that, you know, in, in the States, there's this saying, you know, among some people, once you go black, you can't go back. But in coffee, there's the saying that once you pour the milk in, you can't be black again. It's weird. I never understood those expressions. But here's the deal. If you now accept the explosion of connection and creativity and acceptance and compassion in every single way possible, and now I want you to do your best and really try, I mean really try, to find any remnants of that which we started out doing Havening on. Mm. 
maybe a tiny remnant down under my left shoulder blade. Yeah, that's maybe just going. a tiny remnant going, mm hmm. And what kind of mm hmm is that? What does that want to have happen? Is it saying, be careful, don't get too cocky? No, it's saying, you think so, do you? <laughs> ah, you think so, do you? So if you would give that voice, you know, to somebody who sometimes may have told you that because it's not your voice. Absolutely, it's not you know, my voice. Do you know why we know it's not your voice? This is because it's coming from my left shoulder. <laughs> no, 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 you can have voices there. That's okay, you know, that's normal. <laughs> but, but it said... Don't, you know, you don't think that, you think that don't you, it said, right? So why would you yeah. you yourself? It's somebody else's voice. Ah, of course. All right? oh, that makes sense. <laughs> and whose voice it might be? Oh, um, then ex-husband. <laughs> yeah. And so I want you now, I want you to do this. Take your finger and look at it like this. Look at it. And I want you to imagine the face of your ex-husband on the fingerprint. And I want you to put a ridiculous mustache on him. <laughs> there already and, is. <laughs> I know. <laughs> there you go. And now I want you to just try moving the finger like this and then stop. And just imagine that you control the finger. It can only talk when you move it. When you don't move it, it's silent. Okay? Did you ever inhale helium from a balloon? No? Do you know what it sounds like when people talk yeah. once they... Yeah? So I want you to take a deep breath. Okay, I want you to breathe in and I want you to move your finger and say with a helium voice the words of your husband right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go out loud. You think so, do you? No, helium voice. <laughs> you think so, do you? Do 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 you? And then go like this. <laughs> see you later <laughs> All right. so I want you to look under your left shoulder right now oh mm -hmm. no pokes no pokes nice space nice space nice space getting used to having the space there mm-hmm uh -huh. Yeah. Oh. So oh, how that's, does that? That's, yeah, that's uh, and there's there's some happy. There's happy some happy smiles in there. <laughs> uh oh, you got some happy smiles in there. Be careful; yeah. they can take over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> All right. So just close your eyes for a second. Stop your hands, and just notice what you notice. And just tell me what do you notice that is different now. I'm feeling space for my own voice. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And yeah, it's lots of energy flowing here. Mm. So space for your own voice and lots of energy flowing. What else? And not feeling like I'm being pulled back. Yeah, so if you're not being pulled back, then what are you? I don't know. Free to fly. Free to fly. <laughs> and if you really are free to fly, where will you want to fly to? Oh, just over the land, just to see what's what. Just yeah. to see what's what. Yeah, just exploring. Yeah. Part of a what team. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. That's interesting. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So this is... We're done with the session, yeah. if you agree that we're done. We are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's 19 minutes. And I keep telling people who train in Havening, uh, when, when you get these sessions that they send on video, they're too long. They're too long. It, it's not necessary. Change in the brain takes a millisecond. It's just about finding, you know, going to the right place and finding whatever that is. And I have no idea what the right place is. You are the one who guides me, so I'm following you all along. Are, are you, do you need to land in this new flying uh, moment or can we deconstruct something? Do you want to just land some thoughts a few seconds? Yeah, I can, I can land and, and just feel comfortable about potential. Okay. So let me yeah. know when you're landed and, and then we'll, we'll talk a bit about what we just did.
Okay. You I, sure? have a, I have a nice perch on the top of a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rock and Robin came to my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So mm -hmm. what we did is we didn't actually, I, I, I mean, to be honest, it, we didn't use the science of excuses here. But we did do um, we did do kind of a circle of excellence from NLP. We got resources and we changed how you feel about these things. And we did gold mine in the beginning, and we took the gold mining to have a good neural scheme. But we had a playfulness, a social engagement scheme going the whole way. You you have lots of humor and and fantasy and you know your humor actually guided me through the session. Mm -hmm. So I, I just tried to hold on to the tail of your humor and let it wag me <laughs> through the, you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and so it wasn't uh, completely clean all the way, but it doesn't have to be when there is social engagement. It's more important if you're on the verge of maybe triggering something traumatic or bad, but we weren't even close to that. And so it's about ideas and beliefs, and it's the belief that you can let go of this we did an outcome going back and saying the no, but we also explored with clean language the quality of that no. What kind of a no does it have to be to be that? And what is it that we would like to have happen? Where would it bubble? And also it's about where do you want to go with this? It's not about resolving an SUD to zero. It's about resolving an idea that leads to an outcome in the future that you would like to have happen. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it makes total sense. and. That's exactly what I've been wanting to do. I mean, I've resolved, you know, all of that pretty much. And um, for some some reason, it was that little voice that was holding me back. Yeah, and that that's not and, havening at all. But that's an NLP technique. Ah, <laughs> uh, is it okay? Uh, yeah, that's true. I know that. But yeah, so. Um, it was like the final clearing of the final dust that was still there, like sweeping the house. And, and here's the thing. In my world, absolutely nothing happens without a reason. <laughs> right? So if there is a poke in your shoulder, there is something left. If there is a, res a resent or a rumination, it's because we didn't solve something. Once we solve things, we don't go back. You don't do second grade all over. You know, it's Thank not God. that fun. Right? So, <laughs> so once we solve something, we can let it go. But if we don't solve it, we have to take that class over and over, and we'll end up being, you know, close to 60 and going in second grade, and that's not fun. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I, um, I'm glad I stuck around long enough to kind of clear this stuff. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. So if, if you take off your, um, your Haveny hat, for a mm -hmm. second. And for those watching this video, uh, looking to understand what it's like, because I've said why I did stuff and you have confirmed some of that. But if you just for a second, just put on your Havener hat, your practitioner hat and close your eyes and just rewind that session in your head. And let me know if there's anything you take with you, anything you realize or, or would like to share with me or the world or both. I'm in it. I, well, you met me exactly where I was. And so I, I'm grateful to have um, nourished my own humor enough for it to actually be a, a, a carrying carrying force for me. Um, so you you met me right exactly there. And then it became simple no complications of well you know tell me about that or no no need to focus on um the compression in the chest and the the silence no need to focus on that because it was just ready to fly anyway so for me the attunement or calibration, I guess, as you would want to call it, yeah, was was everything. 
and the attunement together with clean because that's how I yeah. made you. On, I mean, I'm holding up mirrors. You so yeah. I, I I made a definition of what I do, and the definition is I'm a self help facilitator. Yeah. Right. So and we don't we we hypnotists we we um, you do hypnosis as well, don't you? No, no? I'm okay. curious it, about that though. <laughs> it, it's a cool tool because yeah. we are hypnotic creatures. We hypnotize ourselves. So basically, most hypnotists will agree, uh, who have a lot of clinical experience, that we don't hypnotize people. We dehypnotize them because you have hypnotized yourself to believe that you shouldn't think that, right? That's your own hypno hypnotic voice planted there by somebody. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like yeah. the spells in the fairy tales. You know, you break the spell and all of a sudden you're free to move forward. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I totally get that. Excellent. Yeah. It was fun. Wow. That was really fun. <laughs> Thank it you was so a great much. session. I had great laughs. And, yeah, and, and you know, I'm, I'm thankful that we did this and I'm thankful that we can share it. And I hope if somebody learns some from it, you know, it's fine. If somebody has ideas, reflections or critique, fine. You know, just write it in the comments or email or whatever. You know, it's all good. Sounds great. And I, I look forward to watching it again to see, to, to look at it from a different perspective. That can be fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and meanwhile, fly. I will. I'll send you a postcard. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I hope it drops from the sky. It will. <laughs> okay. You take care now. Thanks so much, Joel. That was wonderful. Thank you.